our day starts at Borgata, our favorite poker room. We are looking to play 1-3-0 no limit. So we weren't able to record any really good hands, and weren't really sure how they felt about us actually uh, getting hands on video. So there was one hand that I will have to show on Share My Pair app. We ended up leaving uh, a little later on, and we were able to get some more hands recorded at uh, another casino. But let's go right to this hand. So we were playing about seven-handed, I think, even though it only shows four players here. We pick up eight, six in the small blind and a limped pot, and we decide to bet out for $10. And normally we wouldn't lead out in a pot, but we decided to here. Both players call and onto a turn card, which is the four spades. Now the four is a good card because we have a six in our hand, so we block them from having hands like five, six, four straight. So we decide to bet out again for $25, and then both players call again. Now the river comes a deuce, which is, is essentially a brick. Don't think anyone has a deuce. The other thing is no one raised the flop or turn. So we're not putting anyone on any sort of two pairs, straights, sets, anything like that. So we're thinking one player has a draw that missed. And we're thinking the other player probably has an eight. The thing is we don't like our kicker. So we have to bet big if we're going to win this hand. We go for a $100 bet. The player next to us thinks about it. Decides to fold, and the other player snap folds. So we take down a nice pot. So we ended up leaving because we had reservations for dinner at Vic and Anthony's Steakhouse at the Golden Nugget. And if you haven't gone, you need to go, because this is one of the top steaks I've had in Atlantic City. I did get the ribeye. It was amazing. And unfortunately, the poker room at Golden Nugget was closed. So we had to end up leaving and going back to play at Harris, where we were staying. We bought him for 500 at one three no limit. We did quickly stack a guy for 300 when we hit the nut straight with 910 suited. Uh, but we didn't get the hand on video because we didn't get set up yet. We did miss a few hands due to lack of iCloud storage. And also our phone, uh, the battery dying at the end of the night. So we missed a lot of hands and some hands we just weren't set up for. But after this, we were sitting on a stack of about 800. The first hand we pick up, we have King Jack of Hearts. And we are facing a raise from under the gun to $10. So we decide to make the call. The flop comes ace, three, ten, two hearts. So we have a flush draw and a straight draw. And we face... A bet from the under the gun razor to $12. We can call here. We can also mix in some raises. We decide to just call, however, and onto a turn car, which brings a jack of clubs. Um, now we have a straight draw, a flush draw, and a pair. So um, he decides to check. So we're going to bet this turn because even if he has an ace, uh, we do have lots of outs. And uh, by him checking, you know, he's slowing down, so um, a good spot for us to bet, a good card. We take down a small pot. The next hand we pick up 6-4 suited under the gun, and we raise to $11. A little loose, but, you know, we're making videos here, and we want to make it a little bit exciting and not too boring, so we're spicing it up here. The flop comes 5-7 deuce, two spades after we get two callers. Uh, this is a hand we can continuation bet on, or we can look to check raise, which we prefer, we prefer to check raise this time. Uh, however, both guys behind us do check as well. So we go to a turn card. So no more checking for us. The turn comes with five of clubs. We decided to bet $20. We have the straight draw and the flush draw. We have lots of outs, regardless if we get called. But they just both fold, so we take down a small pot. The next hand we pick up queen seven of spades on the button, and this is an interesting hand. The cutoff limps for $3, so we decide to make a raise to $15, uh, thinking we can bully the guy around a little bit. However, the small blind and the big blind and the guy in the cutoff all call, so four way to a flop. Flop is really good for us. King, jack, nine, two spades. We have a flush draw and a straight draw. So the guy in the small blind decides to lead out for $45. Don't think he's bluffing here. He appears quite strong because he is first act in a four-way pot. So we have two options here. We can raise or we can fold. We were pretty deep at the time. 
Um, you know, he does have hands like king jack, pocket nines, king queens, things like that. We have the straight draws and the flush draw, so it's more likely he has some sort of king or some sort of two pair. We decided to just call on this one. Both other guys fold, so we go heads up to a turn, which brings the absolute worst card, the jack of clubs. The only other worst card would have been another king. So now if he had a hand like king jack or pocket nines, we're just drawing dead. So he thinks for a little while and decides to check. So now we can decide to semi-bluff and represent a jack and bet this turn. However, what kind of jacks were we calling with on the turn for $45? Do we have jack 10? Do we have queen 10? Will we raise with those hands pre-flop? We haven't really shown those type of hands yet. So we kind of just sigh and check it back. The river comes a brick, a two of hearts, so we miss everything. He decides about $80, and we just have to fold. He ends up showing King Jack for a full house, so glad that we didn't attempt to go crazy on that hand or attempt to bluff the turn as we were drawing dead, and it was a hand that we thought he had. The next hand, we pick up Ace-8 in the small blind. There's a raise of $10, two callers, so this is a hand you primarily want to fold in the small blind, but it can also be a good candidate to squeeze, so we decided to squeeze and... Re-raise to $55. The initial razor and the guy next to him both fold. However, the guy on the cutoff decides to make the call. This guy has been pretty aggressive, pretty loose, likes to splash around a lot of pots. Uh, seen him bluff a few times. And we will get into some hands later on in the session that you'll see. Um, so with this flop, we do decide to bet. We decide to bet $40. Uh, we don't need to go crazy, go very large. Um, and he thinks about it for a little while, but he does decide to make the call. The turn brings a six of spades, which is like one of the worst cards. Really bad card. We're in a pretty tough spot here as we are facing an aggressive player who can have any kind of two cards. Spades, nine, tens, six, seven suited, seven, eight suited, a king, anything like that. So we think for a little while um, and we do decide to check. He then decides to make a bet of around $100 or so and he didn't have much behind. So we no longer like our hand. And we also no longer like our actual physical gigantic Shrek looking hand that has been covering the video most of the time. We apologize about that. We will look to fix it in the next video. So we think for a little bit, we think if there's any hands that we can actually beat, but it's probably best that we just fold and wait for a better spot because he's been active and I'm sure there'll be another hand that we can trap him on. We folded and he said he had some sort of king with a spade and a straight draw, like a king nine with a spade. Uh, he was saying our aces were good at the time if we had aces, so he was telling the truth about his hands, and you'll see that later in another hand, as you can actually hear him talk about it now. Uh. Aces are good right now. My aces are good right now? Well, I hear him say aces are good. He had a king, I think he showed, so he was being honest. Anyway, the next time we pick up the 9, 10 of clubs and make a, an $11 raise under the gun, and we get three other callers, so four away to a flop. The flop comes jack, eight, five, two clubs. A good flop for us as we have a straight draw and a flush draw. I think sometimes we can go with a check raise and sometimes we can decide to continuation bet. We do decide to continuation bet for $25. If we were last to act and we were facing a bet, we would certainly raise. However, we were first to act. So we had to decide to either check and hope hopefully someone else bet and then we can raise or just lead out. This time everyone folds and we take it down. Moving on, we are here in the big blind and we pick up 10 jack. We decide to defend our big blind from a $15 raise and we go to a flop. Flop comes queen nine three all clubs 
And again, a pretty good flop for us as we have again another straight draw and flush draw. We decide to check and he continuation bets for about $30 around a pot size bet. We're thinking he has something here, like maybe a pair uh, or something he's trying to protect, like a, an over pair without a club given the bet size. We decide to raise this one to $80 and even if we do get called, we do feel we do have some equity, but he ends up just folding, so good for us. So a pretty big hand for us, but again, not as big as our huge gargantuan Hulk hand that continues to cover the camera. What was that? So you've seen we've had similar types of hands with straight and flush draws. So you notice that we played them all kind of differently. You don't always want to play certain hands the same way every time. If you do, it'll be easier for opponents to figure out what you have by narrowing down your range. You want to remain balanced and keep your opponents guessing. You want to put them in tricky spots. So the last hand of the night we were not able to get on video because our phone battery was basically dead and our iCloud storage was all full. And we were really pissed because this was a crazy hand and we wanted to get it on film. And this next hand we were up against that loose aggressive player who we played a pot with prior. You know, the guy who said our aces were good even though we didn't have the aces, we had the ace eight. And he had the king and told us and showed us and was honest about his hand. So we'll go over the hand using the share my pair app. Okay, so in this hand, there's a $6 straddle. The loose aggressive player calls a $6 straddle, and we are on the button with queen nine of hearts. So we decide to raise to $25. The small blind, big blind fold, the loose aggressive player calls, and we'll refer to him as Pizza Joe, because he sounded like he had a New York accent, and they have good pizza up there, and we like pizza. So Pizza Joe calls, and onto a flop. The flop comes eight king, queen, two clubs. So we decided to bet $25. In retrospect, I think we could have actually checked because he was pretty aggressive and we could have allowed him to start bluffing the turn. Anyway, he decides to raise to $75. So we decided to make the call because what hands could he have really here? He limped in, so most likely he doesn't have king, queen, or pocket eights. We're thinking he more likely has uh, some type of draw, like a straight draw or a flush draw on this board. I mean, would he really go ape dookie with a weak king? The turn brings a two, which really doesn't change much, and he bets out about 130, and we call. We were thinking in our heads the whole time, just no club on the river, no club on the river, and we are calling a shove. And what comes? A club, and the king of clubs, of course. So he shoves all in for $155. So if he had a flush draw, it got there, or if he just has a king, we're beat either way. So we're thinking for a little bit, seeing if there's anything we can beat, like some straight draws or just low pairs. Um, we are getting really good pot odds, but then he starts talking. He says, your aces are good. We say, no, we just have a queen. He says, your queen's good too. But do you remember what he said to us in that prior hand? Let's rewind back to that clip. Aces are good right now. My aces are good at it? Well, I have, GM is 360 as well. GM is 360. So we decide to make the call, and he shows Jack 10 for the missed straight draw. Again, prior to us making the call, he did say, Your queen is good. So I said I believed him and made the call. And I've seen this several times before where people will say, Your hand is good, essentially that they're bluffing and they're telling the truth. But why would anyone ever say that? Why would someone say they're bluffing and that the other person has the best hand? And all I can say to that is, take Pizza Joe for instance. He says, your queen is good. So he wants me to think that he's lying, which would then make me fold thinking that he actually has a good hand, but that's what he wants. So it's like reverse psychology or maybe double reverse psychology. Everyone was like, you called with a queen? I was like, how did you call with that? And I say, I'm sorry, John. I don't remember. This was this guy's tell. And that's why it's important to never say anything when you're bluffing. You don't want to give away any information. You don't want to give away any tells. And what's that rule? The rule is this. You spot a man's tell. You don't say it. Flippin' word. The goat poker movie. 
So a nice profit on the night of about $340 between both places that we played at. So the next morning we ended up going to brunch at the Borgata Buffet, and it's amazing. Not every day at 10 a.m. you can have a variety of cakes, scrambled eggs, and pork fried rice all in the same meal. That brunch was uh, brutal. They just served so much different random stuff. They had like General Tso's chicken next to the scrambled eggs. Ugh. My stomach's like confused right now. My stomach feels more awkward than I did back when Michael Jackson babysat me when I was younger. There we go. Uh, off to the bathroom. Solid session over uh, overall though. Stay tuned to the next one. And uh, I'll catch you then. Yes, we are in the bathroom right now. I'm gonna handle some business. Later.